Hello everyone, my name's Brewcrick. You can call me Brew. Welcome back to Star Citizen. It's Star Citizen Sundays and well, I had planned to bring a really exciting video to you today. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to buy one of the main two starter ships, the Mustang Alpha and the Aurora, and we're going to create a video a day in the life of a new player and walk them through all the things they can expect from that ship, some tips. Um, but there's a selfish reason too, because I've never really flown either. I've been in them maybe once or twice. So yeah, I need to practice them because we intend to take the Aurora and the Mustang against VHRT targets for our Friday shows. So for this Sunday, um, I've been earning money to buy these ships because I want to, oh, the weather's changing. Yes, we were at a lovely snow lake as my backdrop, and now the weather's changing. Anyway, um, so I've been earning money to try and get these ships because I have a personal goal I want to hit because we want to buy some big ships soon for the channel. Um, and I thought, for those of you, it's a Sunday evening or whenever you're watching this, uh, um, you might want to have a little bit of analysis. I've just done a video on the Constellation Andromeda and how it is a really good all-rounder money earner and how you can actually grind to rent it and pay for its rent, I said, within the first hour. But I've got some figures that might surprise you and uh, you can pay for its rent in literally 12 minutes. And everything else after that is profit. So in theory, you don't really ever need to buy the Andromeda if you don't want to bar the hassle of having to rent it at the start of your play sessions. So, let me just go through some facts and figures. Let me take you to my office. Let's go back into whoop, uh, first person. And uh, would you again just look at this game? Let's just have a wee look out here at the window. It's snowing, guys. It's snowing. I know there's some bad storms and stuff around the UK and the States. Hope everyone's okay. You're having a good week. Uh, it's Sunday here at the time of recording. Wow, just look at that. I'm, I'm looking outside. <laughs> I've, I've glitched out the window. Can we, can we spoof that a bit? Can I go out further? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm standing on the strut looking out the window. Very cool. Anyway, this is a very short video. Well, it depends how much I, I rant. Oh, can we just look at that for a second? Can I crouch down? Oh, this game. The immersion. The immersion. Very awesome. Uh, I really want the Phoenix because this is not a good ship to have a business meeting or a, a analytical um, earning potential breakdown of this ship. So I don't know where we're going to go. Should we stand outside for our discussion? I think we might freeze if we stand outside. What do you think? Hmm. Or should we sit at the table? We'll stand outside because it's a bit prettier. I mean, inside here is nice, but let's go outside. And if we freeze, we'll come back inside. Okay. So, earning uh, potential, facts and figures. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm going to get squished. There we go. Uh, so, let's go minus 13 degrees. We should be okay. <laughs> let's get the camera set up. So, we've got the, the ship in question behind us. And let's bring up the earning potentials. Oh my god, it's so cool. Anyway, Star Citizen, that's... that's. Uh, <laughs> I could just stare at this. This is all the, the, the fun that we need. Um, So, a bit of the... Well, I find it fascinating. You might find it boring. If you do, um, feel free to click off and know that in an hour, you can earn easily 200,000 AUEC credits doing VHRT bounties in the constellation without any real stress other than bugs. But if you want to stick around and look at the miles and the figures and the things that I encountered over an hour, that's what we're going to do. Um, that's what we're going to do now over the next uh, 10 minutes or so. So let me just bring up that information. Okay, I'm back and we've got our little spreadsheet that we have put together here just so I could track how well I'm doing over an hour and you know, where I'm slowing down and, and um, how much money's coming in and what's causing those delays and efficiencies. So this was taken today, just before filming this video for you. Uh, <laughs> you can see poor poor little Brew in his red armor slowly turning to white as he freezes. <laughs> Let me see. Oh no, little Brew. You okay, buddy? 
How much time? It says you're okay. Let me wipe wipe your visor for you. There you go, bud. There you go. Can, uh, can we just yeah, this game. Anyway, let's 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 talk about the I don't think it's boring, but let's talk about the boring stuff. Let's look at the facts and figures. So Okay, Constellation Andromeda took it out today on the 30th of January 2022 for one hour, earned a total of 271,600 AUEC. I've just put the dollars in because it formats it nicely. Um, we killed 20 ships. Now, I didn't count any other ships that I did kill because I didn't have time to count the amount. So we probably earned a little bit more. But this was pretty accurate. If anything, this is an uh, underestimation of um of what we actually did okay so if you want to drop off now uh if you've seen the constellation video in depth and you're still not sure if you want to take this ship out try it rent it and earn some money in it there you go Two hundred and seventy thousand auec in one hour it's it's pretty good now well, you might say to me hey brew you did a video with the 600i where you earned one hundred and fifty thousand and in 15 minutes killing ERTs. Yes, <laughs> but that was an exploit to a degree because the Hammerhead shields weren't loading up in 316. They are now, so it might take a little bit longer. Plus that is stressful. Um, other than the bugs that we're gonna go into, VHRTing in a Connie is nice and relaxed. You're never really in any massive danger. If you're following the tips in the previous video I made, you know, going in slow and you know, reinforcing your forward shields and you know, keeping your power triangle. Uh, recharging your boost to bring your nose around, recharging your weapons to keep that clip up, uh, try not to get swarmed. Um, if you're doing all those things, it's really relaxed. You're just, you know, you're chilling for an hour in the evening and you're making uh, over a quarter of a million credits. So, you know, in four days, four weeknights, a Monday, a Wednesday, a Friday, you're making nearly a mil. And then if you have a big session at the weekend or, you, or a Sunday... You're making a million credits a week. You're buying this ship in three weeks. If you're only spending an hour, let's say an hour and a half to get the ship and log on and stuff. An hour and a half, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, playing Star Citizen. And you're getting lots of practice. So, of course, the traders, and I need to get into trading. I do want to experience that gameplay loop. But the traders will say, you know, we make that in one run, 15, 20 minutes. Okay, but you got to invest capital. There's pirates to think about. Um, and my argument to that is, and that's not really an argument, because it's it's worth giving trading a go. I want to I want to get into trading. Absolutely, I want to get big returns and stuff like that. But flying in this manner gives you so much practice into handling the ship, the ship that you want to become an expert in, you know, and, and and maneuvering with it and getting a real feel for it, especially as it's tweaked and changed over time. Because someone gave me a really good comment. It's like, well, why bother doing any of this? They're going to change things. And that's a really good point. Um, but by practicing them now, you really get a handle of when things change. Are you okay, Brew? You're like, little, little Brew guy, you're crouching. And is your health okay? Yeah, he's okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, let's deep dive into this. I'm going to expand this little screenshot I've got here of the figures. And let's just zoom in so you can really see it. So, uh, Constellation, I started just before 5 p.m. Uh, the first kill is when I sort of start the timer. So, first kill, then the timer begins. Uh, moving to the second kill, this is around Crusader. So, if we go back to Star Citizen. And bring up our map. This is all around the Crusader space here. And the reason why I choose that is because historically, before atmospheric bounties came in, um, all the bounties would pop around yellow. So you would just be quantuming, 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 quantuming all around this outer ring. And your travel time would be next to nothing. Now, because of atmospheric bounties, you move from yellow to Daymar to Salon and back. I've never seen any space bounties around Salon and Daymar. They are the atmospheric ones. And then if there's any space ones, you go back to yellow, and they're in the belt. And there's a wee bit of a, <laughs> a, a way around that. You can abandon the bounty, but I think I think they're copping on to that, and there's a delay in you getting that bounty type back. So if I delayed a VHRT, or if I abandoned it, excuse me, there'd be a delay in getting the next one, which seems to have happened to me if we look back at the stats. So let's bring back the stats now. Okay. Four minutes popped a VHRT bounty, so 
uh, you have to unlock your VHRTs if, if you're seeing this for the first time. So you have to do your certifications. Uh, so go into your Moby Glass, Contract Manager, General, Bounty Hunter. And in here, you probably won't have as much of this if you're just starting out. Uh, there'll be something like certification, test certification, get your Bounty Hunter license, something like Just do all of them. And eventually you'll unlock very low risk targets, VLRTs, then low risk targets, LRTs, MRTs. HRTs, VHRTs, and ERTs. ERTs paying the most, but they're taking on a hammerhead. There's a big difficulty jump from an ERT to a VHRT. And if you have your wrap up, as you can see, this is a base amount of 17,500. But the more you kill, if we go into uh, here, you can see I've got, you've got reputation. And there's reputation for different systems. So I've been spending a lot of time in Crusader. So my rep is, oh, nearly maxed. I don't have the master tracker. Hey, well, there you go. I'm missing out on money. I'm missing out on a 5% payment, payment bonus. Is that because I haven't killed enough? Damn, what is that? Well, there you go. <laughs> but I'm getting a 15% payment bonus at the minute. And that's why I'm getting 22 as opposed to the 17,500 that you see on the Moby Glass. Oh my God, this game is so bloody pretty. Anyway, um, back to our stats. So here we are back at the stats. Four minutes, 22 brings us to 44,000. And then the problem happens. There's a new bug in 3.16.1. I've never seen it before personally where ships are untargetable. You just can't T lock onto them. And the Connie's gimbal size fours are its strength because it just minces stuff. So bringing that nose to bear, you just need to get it in the general vicinity. And those gimbal size four guns destroy. This is really tricky, and I've only been able to not get too much of a hit on the time because I've been practicing sort of uh, free flying and stuff like that. So if this happens, you could you could do it for the practice. Like this game is meant to be very fun. You know, if you don't want to squish or squash all like every bit of efficiency out of what you're doing, you could just have a play about and switch your gimbals using G. So that's how you cycle through your gimbals to the last mode, which is like a free free aim mode. And that means it's kind of like a turret. So the, what, where you point your mouse is where they shoot. Uh, so that's how I deal with the targeting bug. Then I got a quantum bug, which means um, when I was trying to travel to the location, um, it wouldn't lock on. So you had to like re-spool, re-spool, if not go into the map and try and then uh, set route and clear route. So that takes time. So then instead of actually doing that bounty, I dropped it and took a new bounty or tried to, but then the VRT was not showing up in the list. So then there was a spawning bug in terms of spawning the mission into your Moby Glass list. So all that went down and we still did it in seven minutes, which wasn't too bad. Then because of that uh, mission, someone flew into me and smashed into me. It was dangerous amount of damage because blowing up and dying takes more than nine minutes to go and repair because you got to spawn and get your gear and call your ship and wait for it to claim. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go repair, which cost me 4k. Um, and then I got a targeting bug when I went into that fight. But traveling from this fight to this next fight here, and repairing, and completing the fight only took 9 minutes. So that wasn't too bad. Then we have another uh, issue where I had to fly from uh, Yella in space to one of the moons and fight in atmosphere. And again, there was a quantum bug trying to get down to the planet, but I got there eventually. So that was eight minutes. But then if you look at all the rest of them here, even with quantum traveling between moons, like I showed you on the map, four minutes, three minutes, four minutes, two minutes, four minutes. So I'd say on average, we're looking at four to five minutes for 22,000. If these two bugs weren't here, we could easily add another 50K onto this, bringing it up to 300,000 per hour. But what I would probably take away from this analysis is I would actually minus from it. Because it's pre-alpha, we're going to get bugs, right? That's that's the nature of it. We're going to get bugs. So I would probably quote the Constellation Andromeda doing at 200 to 250,000 AUEC per hour, relaxed, taking your time. Uh, I even included there was a bit of a bio break down here. And down here, you see this sort of last row. Um, the VHRTs had stopped spawning. That's why these price amounts are different. So I need to earn some money. So I did HRTs and then killed the additional ships that spawn with it. Because if you've got a call to arms, so let's go back to our, our popsicle. <laughs> our popsicle little brew. Um, 
if we go into our contracts manager and go down to mercenary in here there'll be a mission i've already got it accepted called a call to arms and that just gives you depending upon the ship an extra 500 thousand or even sometimes 1500 um auec oh there's a ship over there see that little dot that's a ship because over that hill there's a place called afterlife we're currently on salon i think um, and I was going to go down and look at it, but I think it's a, a private security area and I started getting shot at. So they're probably wondering like what we're doing here. So expect for us to get um, blapped in a second. But anyway, <laughs> back to the spreadsheet for the final time to finish up this video and this analysis. So you can see like even down here, bounty spawning delay. So it wasn't coming up in the Moby Glass. Uh, I atmosphered to a different moon because then I got a... I finally got one of VHRT, but then the quantum bugged. I dropped the mission, and now the VHRT didn't come back, so I, ac I accepted the HRT, but it wasn't a space one, so I had to fly down to Atmo. And from completing this last mission to dealing with all these bugs and completing the second last mission, that still was only seven minutes. It's nowhere near as efficient as before, but here's 14 and a half K. If you're thinking like box runs and stuff like that, I don't think, you know, you're not going to get up and down to three locations in a delivery box run in seven minutes. Maybe you can if, you, if you're a super good pilot of a super fast ship. So anyway, um, bounty hunting is one of many gameplay loops. It's not all about the money, but if you are really wanting to save up for a ship that you've got your eyes on and you want to um, buy it in-game, but you're like, how am I ever going to afford that if I'm grinding it out in the smaller starter ships? But remember, we've done one on the, on the Avenger Titan. I've been calling that by the na wrong name. Uh, someone in chat absolutely reminded me I was calling it a Titan Avenger. Now now I can't even remember what's the, it's a, it's the Avenger Titan, isn't it? Titan, yes. But I think I was saying Titan Avenger. Now, now I'm confused. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little bit mixed up. Uh, that is just my style. I apologize for it, but it's me. So, you know, what can I do? So anyway, um, yeah, if you're thinking, you know, the starter ships, it's just a little bit too stressful. If they do a lot of dog fighting, I want something that's just a bit more relaxing. Um, we are uh, we are going to be doing the Mustang, the other starter ship, and the Aurora's. That's coming out uh, next week and the week after. Um, you can get into the ship. So 50,000, right? So total earned after two bounties was 44. Total earned after three bounties, 66. And when I do the Aurora, or the, when I do the Mustang video on Monday or Tuesday, we're going to show you that you don't actually start in bounty hunting missions if you want to rent a Connie. You can earn whatever amount it is. I think it might be 80K to rent the Connie. Um, 50, I'll check now for you. Um, you do a thing called uh, surveillance missions, destroying these pods in space, and it's a lot easier. But you eventually want to start bounty hunting to grind out. Uh, if we go back to our little popsicle brew, you want to start bounty hunting so you can grind out this rep. And so you can unlock your certifications to get all the VHRTs and HRTs and MRTs and so on and so forth. So there you have it. That's been a bit more of a technical episode. The sun is setting. How appropriate. Oh, my God. Oh my god. Hang on, he turned around so we can see the sun setting. Oh no, brew. Little popsicle brew, where'd you go? There we go. I really hope you've enjoyed this short Sunday Star Citizen video. Keep an eye out for our new player first look Mustang video coming out in a day or two. And then the following Friday, our Canet VHRT in one of the most common starter ships. I'm very afraid because... I don't know if it's meant to do that, but we're going to have a really good try at working on the tactics and pushing that little ship as hard as it can go. So you, if you are a new player, can get to that top end content, can start earning big bucks in game to fly ships like the amazing Constellation Andromeda behind my little popsicle character here on screen. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great week and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.